side of life. Hi, I'm Harry Marks, and this is Let's All Go to the Lobby, your introduction to the film you're about to watch. Our final viewer submission is the chilling real-life story of the Clutter Family murders from 1959. Starring Robert Blake and Scott Wilson, this is In Cold Blood. The film had started as a magazine article for The New Yorker, written by Truman Capote. Capote had gone to Kansas for research, along with his friend, to kill a Mockingbird author, Harper Lee, hoping her presence might help the locals open up to him more. Once the article was finished, it was published in four parts in 1965, before it was repackaged as a book the following year. In Cold Blood, the novel was nonfiction, masquerading as fiction, much like the film would be in 1967. Several key details and characters were changed for the movie, namely the reporter Jensen, who was not present in the book, but a lot of effort went into portraying the murders and ensuing trial as realistically as possible. For example, director Richard Brooks filmed in many of the actual locations detailed in the novel, including the Clutter home. He even used daughter Nancy Clutter's real horse, Babe, for several shots, and populated the interior of the Clutter home set with actual family photos of the victims. Another way to sell the realism of the film was to not use A-list actors in the leading roles. Columbia Pictures had originally wanted Paul Newman and Steve McQueen to play killers Richard Hickok and Perry Smith, respectively, but Brooks disagreed. Audiences would be too distracted by the presence of popular actors, so he decided to go with relative unknowns Robert Blake as Smith and Scott Wilson as Hickok. Wilson is perhaps best remembered as Herschel Green on the television series The Walking Dead, while Blake actually went on trial for the murder of his second wife, Bonnie Lee Bakley, in 2001. There was even a push to get Judge Roland Tate, who had presided over the actual case, to play himself in the film. Sadly, Tate died before filming began, and he was replaced with John Collins, a local auctioneer with no other credits to his name. The music for In Cold Blood was composed by Quincy Jones, who was considered an unusual choice for a movie about a Kansas farmland murder. Jones was mainly a jazz composer who had worked with the likes of Frank Sinatra and Sammy Davis Jr., though he had done some film work before, including 1965's The Pawn Broker, starring Rod Steiger. The studio had originally wanted Leonard Bernstein to score In Cold Blood. Truman Capote also lobbied hard to get Jones removed from the picture, calling up Richard Brooks and asking him why a black man would be writing, quote, music for a film with no people of color in it, to which Brooks replied, F you, he's doing the music. In Cold Blood was nominated for four Oscars, including Best Original Score, and was a critical and commercial success. It was also viewed as a quasi-documentary, according to the New York Times, due to its use of real people and locations involved in the crime to bring an unparalleled level of authenticity to the screen. Starring Robert Blake, Scott Wilson, and John Forsyth, from director Richard Brooks and Columbia Pictures, this is 1967's In Cold Blood.